while I wait for the train to clear Saks Road. Welcome to Virtually Live 30. Woo! Finally, been a little busy with the Welcome Center edition, the Lois King Education Center. We'll bring you to our open house we had a week and a half ago. Yeah. It is November 1st, and it's about, I don't know, 30 degrees. But we've had a crazy October. Had five inches of snow over three different days in October, and that was mid-October. And then we've had a string of 60 degree days, so crazy. It's not gonna last, we know that. Most of the bears are hibernating. We could start putting up the feeders, though we'll probably wait till more Thanksgiving time. Let's get to it. Just had a flock of snow buntings. We'll see if we can catch up with them. And I've got a happy announcement for you. Local photographer, you've probably seen him around, Ron Dominic, has made the effort to replace the Admiral Road feeders. These are community feeders. And yeah, thanks, Ron. That's awesome, because that is an iconic spot in the Sagzim bog. Yikes, I'm about out of gas. Well, I need to go to the Wilbert Cafe anyway, so I might as well head to Cotton. And here's a far north sparrow that I saw in Churchill, Manitoba this summer, migrating through the American tree sparrow. Love to see them. And just a gentle reminder that Give to the Max Day is Thursday, November 17th, and we make a good chunk of our operating budget on that day, but you can give right now. They are open for giving. Our biggest projects coming up would be more land purchases, that 1,010-acre Owls and Warblers Critical Corridor project, as well as interpretive displays for the new Lois King Education Center. Let's step back in time to this summer, and I want to introduce you to our new Starflower Bog. Drum roll, please. And we are rolling up on our latest addition to the Owls and Warblers Critical Corridor Project. Welcome to Starflower Bog, made possible by one of our bog buddies, Gordon Anderson. And this is 120 acres, about 90 of which are really nice black spruce and tamarack bog. And then there's also kind of a wet meadow. There's these little sedge areas, sedge rivers. Starflower is a really cool flower. It's a boreal species, but often it has seven seven parts to it. Seven leaves, seven sepals to the flowers, seven petals on the flowers. Um, yes, it can have five, it can have six, it can have eight. <laughs> but uh, yeah, one of the few heptandric species of wildflowers. And we also are going to put a winter wren on the sign. Yeah, uh, they, they like this kind of habitat. Our head naturalist Clinton and one of our BioBlitz leaders, Chad, Heinz found some rare spiders out here recently as well. It's right at Correction Line and Owl Avenue, that intersection. There's also a little parking area where if you ask for permission, um, you could park a RV overnight uh, or a camper. There's no hookups or anything like that, but yeah, just let us know. This puts us at over 4,000. You know what? I'm gonna fill in the blank here. Right here is the number of acres we now have right here, that you have, that we have, that you can enjoy. Really nice Connecticut warbler habitat in the future when these young tamaracks grow up. But this stuff is pretty thick right now. Trying to get to the more open part of the bog. Right now you can walk down this old logging road along the ditch berm to access some really beautiful tamarack, mature tamarack forest. Yeah, here we are. Looks like a blackback woodpecker tree. 
Here's what's left of a pink lady slipper. Good to know they are here. Ouch, just got bit. Golden crown kinglet, hermit thrush. There's the golden crown kinglet. Not bad for late morning, mid July. Should have put on more bug dope. That's a little introduction to starflower bog. We hope to explore it lots more in 2023. I really don't know which way to go right now. Very confused. We wish you could have been there, but here are some video clips from our dedication and open house of the new Lois King Education they Center. Sure looked like that. They looked like a like mallard, but it's all yeah. black. Yeah. The Y Saxon Bog. Lois and I also organized the Minnetonka Bird Club. As we became more involved in the birding community, we became uh, aware of Saxon Bog and Sparky and visited frequently. The Friends of Saxon Bog is a special organization for supporting a unique habitat, and my family and I are delighted to help with the development of this learning center so that others can and will enjoy and learn about this special area. So Lois, Lois would have been just delighted with us. This is just a wonderful spot. And it's a wonderful thing for, for Lois to uh, have her name, although it would be much better if she was here. Doing something in her name is wonderful. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to know Lois. I feel like we would have been fast friends. And when I read her obituary, the things that stood out to me, what you said, she was friendly, she was kind, she was smart, she was amazing, and she was welcoming. And those five things are what we hope to embody here in helping other people learn about the bog, its importance to our planet, to our place on the planet, and to all of what our organization hopes to do in terms of preserving this, this wonderful place, and now in her honor. But what we all share is a deep love for this place. When people are here, if it's their first trip or their 10th trip, there is something special they take home with them every time. The look of amazement and wonder on, on kids as they're walking the paths or finding out about a new insect. You know, it's not just about the owls and in the wintertime or photography. It's about what you make it, what you bring to the bog and what you take home. You can count on us to do good things in your wife's memory. Yeah, here we go, anywhere. There goes ribbon cutting and oh, there, there, here it goes. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. And if you are so inclined, you can join these awesome bog buddies who have donated $5,000 or more and become the tile sponsors for the new Welcome Center and now for interpretive displays. So $5,000 or more, and you get your name on one of these very cool handmade tiles by Nancy Housel Johnson up in Fairbanks, Alaska. They will be on permanent display in the Lois King Education Center. On the same day, we debuted our Taiga Boardwalk in memory of John C. Gale. Thanks to Jose Arrieta and his generous donation that funded this in memory of his father-in-law. It is located just west of the Welcome Center and will be a unique way to access the Taiga Forest stunted black spruce. There is a tamarack shortage, so it only goes a couple hundred feet right now, but hopefully by late winter we'll have it completed. Thanks to Mark Dudek Johnson, who put in a ton of hours to construct this boardwalk, and Andrew Webster, our builder, as well. Well, that was pretty neat. Just saw a fox kind of paralleling the road and uh, yeah, it was kind of on the road. You never know what you're gonna see in the Sag Zimbog. <laughs> Pretty slow this morning. Snow buntings, I had a northern trike. About 9 a.m., there's a fox running along the road. And uh, yeah, you know, I got it in front of it and uh, he just kept running. So it didn't get much, so I went way up ahead, like a half mile up ahead, <laughs> laid down uh, paralleling the road and um, he was on his way he was on a mission because he just kind of ran within about 12 feet of me <laughs> less of that maybe 
just kind of looked at me and, and kept going. <laughs> so cute little fox, who knows, maybe a yearling. But you never know. Got some really neat slow motion video and some stills. I mean, a fox running at eye level. Neat experience though, just that fox didn't really seem to care. Didn't seem habituated to humans either because it wasn't, you know, stopping and begging for food or anything. Just kind of slowed down, went up, went past me, looked at me because it didn't see me till it was almost right up on me and just kept going. I have to put in a plug for the 2023 Sax Zimbog Wild Calendar. You can get it on our website. We'll ship it right out to you. Amazing photos. And get this, all 100 photos were taken in 12 months prior to publication and all in the Sax Zimbog. Yeah, stunning. Thanks for joining me on that short little jaunt this morning in the Sax Zimbog, November 1st. Remember, we're not putting up our feeders probably till mid-November. Got to wait till those last bears are down. And the Welcome Center and Lois King Education Space opens on Saturday, December 3rd. Superstar bird of the day for me is the Cooper's Hawk. And I quit filming so I could get a little closer. And then, of course, that's when the Cooper's Hawk jumped off its perch and flew right past my van hunting little songbirds in the ditch. So I missed that, but it was exciting to see. And Superstar Mammal, no doubt at all. That red fox who just cruised right by me as if I was just a somewhat inanimate lump, which I guess I am. So until next time, keep your feet in these fallen leaves, get out on a hike, but make sure it's not deer hunting season when you do, or maybe go deer hunting. Yeah, I don't know. And keep your head up scanning for those boreal birds returning to the Sag Zimbug. Things like northern hawk owl. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice to have a good hawk owl year this year? If you're planning a Sag Zimbog trip for early winter, maybe wait till we open the Welcome Center on December 3rd. November, we like to leave it for our deer hunting neighbors uh, and not bother them in the Sag Zimbog. Plus, a lot of the birds aren't back yet and a lot of the feeders aren't filled yet because the bears are not all hibernating, probably most, but there's always those stragglers in November that can wreak some havoc on bird feeders. So we open Saturday, December 3rd, come on. And join us after that. Take care. See ya.